Okay, welcome to class number five. Believe it or not, we only have one more class, and, and next week we're going to do the uh, eight ball tournament with prizes as usual. And there's going to be a drawing for a, for a cue as well. You know, everybody will get the same shot, we'll just draw pills to do that. But today I, I want to focus on eight ball. A uh, couple of review items. You know, last week we did English and uh, we also did combinations. So I just want to do a little bit related to that before we get into eight ball. You notice I have a target, Nyla knows this well. She was able to put her cue ball in the yellow several times the other day, which was very kind of, cool. Yeah. And there, believe it or not, there used to be a game 25 years ago called Target Pool. And it died out, of course. Never, never took off. But there was actually a series of holes or challenges where you had to, you know, earn points. Now, the first thing I want to say, you know, we did English, but still, you know, the center of the cue ball is, is usually your best option, you know, because what we learned from English last week is there's two factors that make English difficult and complex. One, if you hit the if you hit the left or the right side of the cue ball with any power at all, it will deflect the opposite way. And if you hit it a little softer on either side of the cue ball, it will spin and curve a little bit. So, you know, the, the crucial factor is how hard you hit the cue ball with English, how much stroke you put on it. And remember, that's one thing I'd really like you to remember in this class. When you want more power, simply, the, it's basically the same stroke, it's just more of it. More back, back swing, and a nice, gentle pause at the back is important, because you don't want to jerk the cue through quickly. Very smooth and rhythmic back, and then all the way through. And the more, more stroke that you put on the shot, the more power you will get, the more draw, the more follow, whatever. Now, uh, I put down a couple of donuts here just to kind of uh, have some fun. The one thing to remember is that the center of the table is always your friend, okay? A lot of times when you're playing position in eight ball, you're actually trying to cross the center of the table. And something a lot of people don't know, when the cue ball crosses the center of the table, it's impossible to scratch. Okay. All right? Cool. Unless, unless, no, I'm, I'm serious, unless you're shooting from one pocket to the other like this, or you carry them off a ball. But all angle shots like this, if you cross the center of the table, it's impossible to scratch. So if you want to try this out later, it's a, it's a lot of fun. Again, you see the tangent line here with a normal sunshot to take the cue ball right to the yellow. And uh, if you want to play around with this, this is a great way to learn position. You know, we can put it anywhere on the table, this, this target. So I'm just going to hit dead center ball, maybe a hair below. What did I get a red? Not bad, not bad. Okay. <laughs> All, right. All right, let's move it down a little ways. And this is how you learn to control the cue ball. Like on this one, I'm going to set up the same shot. Now, what happens if I cross the center of the table on this shot? It's going to go right to the yellow, isn't it? So basically, I'm hitting the exact same shot, only I'm using more stroke now. Perfect. Anyway, have fun with that. That's a, it, this is how you learn to play position. And the one thing to remember, there's more than one way to do this. This is something that a lot of people don't understand or don't realize. That was a stun shot. In other words, the ball was skidding, right? But what happens if I use a little right English and hit a rolling ball? Let's see where it goes. One full Q-tip of right English and a rolling ball. Very nice. 
what did you notice that happened there? It so went it, exactly the same spot, didn't it? Mm -hmm. So there's more than one way to do th do shots, and that's you know sometimes that's the reason why you use English. Okay. Any questions on any of that? I do have a question. Yeah, on, go ahead. On the Karun shot. Karum shot. The Karum shot. Okay. Yeah. Um, and, and it has to do with the eight ball in general when you're playing. When you bank off of the eight ball to put your ball into the side pocket, if you caroom off of the yes. eight ball? As long as you hit your, your uh, Object group ball first. of balls first. Okay. And the eight ball can be like second in line on a combination. Got but it. you always have to hit your ball first. Otherwise, your opponent gets ball in hand. Okay. In fact, we're going we're gonna to do eight ball today. That's the main thing. I just wanted to do one more thing on combinations to make sure that you've got that. And again, next week when we have our tournament, it's going to be a chip tournament. We're going to use nine balls. And what, what I'm going to encourage you to do is, is ask for coaching from Brad and I throughout the entire tournament. You know, so we can make it more of a training or a learning experience. I mean, maybe what's the best shot to select and things like that. But let's take two strikes and I'll aim them at this pocket since I got the camera up there. And I want you to kind of get behind the pocket and tell me how to hit this shot to make it. This is kind of a, a way to review what we learned last time. <laughs> You hit the uh, left side of the ball. All right. Exactly. Mm -hmm. All right. What happens when I do hit the left side it of the ball? Spins out 11 in. All right. What's going to happen is the 13 is going to turn yes. that way it and throw the 11 to the right. And again, if I hit it hard, it won't throw as much. But if I hit it nice Soft. and easy, It'll nice and easy. Like crazy. Go nice. straight in the pocket. Nice. And again, I want you to remember that because that'll that'll win you games in eight ball, you know, very often. So. Anything else on combinations? And a lot of times, combinations aren't easy like that. They're off angle, or you have difficult shots like this. Let's say you're playing eight ball, for example. And I want to make the only shot I really have here is the nine in the corner. And you know what? There's no real secret to this. You just have to be unbelievably precise to make these combinations. Basically, what I do on this shot, I imagine the 13 ball is the cue ball, and I see exactly where I need to hit it in order to make the nine in the corner. In other words, that's my contact point. The ghost ball is right there. And that's, I aim for the center of that in order to make the nine in the corner. And that's really, there's no secret to these. You just have to be really, really right up. And those are hard shots. Anytime you have combinations off angle that are separated like that. And the only way to get good at those is to practice. Any questions on combinations before we leave that? All right. Uh, Good morning. Hi. The Nick. Uh, oh, that's a phone. Do you guys want any milk or sugar? No. No. Jeff? I just want some coffee, please. Yeah. No milk or sugar? Oh. Um, yeah, a little bit. It's so sad. It's a bug. I'll just make it. Let them get their Yeah, They need that. <laughs> did, did, uh, yeah. I don't, I can't recall if we covered, uh, cue ball frozen to another ball. There you go. Cover that. Okay. Could I see one though? I wasn't here last week. Just one of those shots where the cue ball is, like it, like he said. Could oh, I see one of those shots? Okay. All right. What Jan's asking about when the cue ball, for example, is frozen to an object ball. Now, the rules of eight ball 
basically state that if the balls are frozen together and you can kind of check it, if you're playing in league or something, you would have somebody come over and, to make sure that's the fact. Because if it's, there's any space between the balls, you can't shoot through it. That would be a foul. But if they are frozen together like this, then you can actually just shoot right through it. Like for example, this particular frozen ball is aimed slightly to the left of the pocket. Okay? And if you come over there, you can kind of see that. So, in this case, it would be illegal to actually shoot right through the ball. Now, in order to make this, you'll notice the five is aimed to the left of the pocket. All I need to do is put a little left English and I should be able to make it right in the pocket. And then there's another way to make it too. Let me show you the other one. This, you'll see the seven ball and the cue ball are frozen and they're aimed slightly to the left of the pocket. Now the other method to make these is to shoot it from this angle. And if I shoot the cue ball at this angle, it'll actually throw the seven a little to the right. So let me get it just set up perfectly. So you can see that's to the left of the pocket. All I have to do to make this is shoot it like this. I'm almost through it too much. So those are those type of shots, and that's a more advanced, you know, and, a, and always remember, but if there's space in between the balls like this, then you have to shoot away or shoot low. If you go through it, you a double hit, that's a foul. And uh, your opponent will get ball in Yeah, Explain that again, it's not making sense to me. All right. If there's any space between the object ball and the cue ball, you have to shoot away from it. Oh. Or, or shoot down like this. Okay. Because if you go through it like that, that's a foul. Because that's a double hit. Gotcha. The cue ball hits the object yeah. ball, comes back and hits the tip of the cue. Gotcha. Right. So, so the it, when it's that close, the tip always hits the cue ball twice. That's so, right. so and you that's, do. Just do an elevated hitting down low, and then you can compensate for that, or not have to worry about. The yeah, but the problem with that is, <clears throat> if you don't get your stick out of the way soon enough, right. then it's gonna it's gonna hit that object ball and come back and hit your stick. So you're better off going off at an angle. Okay. <clears throat> All right. Uh, let's talk about eight ball. And for for. For the sake of demonstration today, we'll use all 15 balls. But remember, next Saturday, we're only going to use nine balls, four stripes, four solids, and an eight ball. Because I want you to have an opportunity to play everybody in the class. Jackson, how do you break when you, uh, do you break from the side? Or you from I'm kind of like, yeah. uh, I'm not total center, probably like a little bit off center. Yeah. Okay. All right. When you rack the balls in eight ball, and some of you already know this, the eight in the middle. But the only other requirement is then in the back row you have different, different ones on your side: stripe solid, stripe solid. That's the only requirement. All that other stuff about alternating the balls and stuff is not according to the rules. But a lot of people do that anyway just because it's fun and they like to, you know, spread them out like that. I once had somebody get mad at me because I had all solids on one side. And they thought I was trying to cheat There's or something. There's no cheating. You have those balls ever you want. Solid yeah, solid right, back. right. All right, when you're, when you're playing league or you're playing next Saturday, you rack your own. And that's important because it's important that you get a tight rack. And you'll notice when I'm racking, I'm using my thumbs in the back row to turn the balls forward because I want to make sure they stay frozen. Not bad. That looks like a pretty good rack. And again, sometimes it's a good idea to check and just see and make sure the front balls are all touching. Don't use your playing cue when you break, okay? 
I have an actual brake jump cue here with a really good braking tip. It's called Phenolic. It's like stone, it's so hard. All right? And it gives you the maximum power in the shot. Another factor is it's not a good idea to get a really heavy brake cue. Some people think that helps you brake, and that's wrong. Most of the pros and good players use lighter brake cues. So they get more, they get more velocity, okay? What, Our, way do, what way do you use on a brake? This is about a 19. Yeah, that's what I yeah, use a 19. Yeah. That's plenty, plenty mm -hmm. weight. 21 is a little bit too heavy. I had purchased a, yeah. a, a brake stick and it was like 25 ounces, right? Oh yeah. my gosh. Yeah, I set it back. I go, this, this, is, yeah. this is ridiculous. Right. Yeah. In the old days, they used to think that was, that was good. Yeah. It's not. Right. Yeah. I didn't know they went that high. Yeah, I think, that, I think 25 is max. Wow. And then I know some of the pros use as, as light as a 17. Oh, yeah. Wow. Oh, yeah. Yes. Now, uh, when you break an eight ball, in the old days, people would always break from here. And the reason why they would do that is they would hit the second ball pretty solid with a little low ball. And the eight would oftentimes kick in the side pocket or the corner and win the game. Trick shot. Yeah. But not anymore because uh, now the rules have changed. The eight on the break literally gets spot and you don't, spotted and you don't win the game. And you actually have an option, if you make the eight on the break, you can actually re-break. Yeah. But if you don't like the setup. Or okay. spot it. Or spot it and continue shooting. Now, for a big table eight ball, I recommend breaking not from directly center, but just a little bit to one side or the other. And uh, you probably want to get the cue ball up by the, the line, the kitchen line, because you want to get as much power and accuracy as you can. The main thing that I think about with breaking an eight ball is to hit it as, as square as possible running the 15 ball. So the cue ball doesn't fly around the table and scratch. And again, accuracy on a break is more important than power, because if you hit it right on the nose, those balls are going to spread real well. And Pete, with that, I, yeah. I notice my brakes getting stronger as I yeah. my shots straight. Sure. But I still can't, I still have a cluster of balls right in the middle. It seems like I can't get enough power to spread them out yeah. enough to make it more of a competitive game. Yeah, they're just very clustered. Well, that's a that's a work in progress. And again, the, the thing to work on there is getting a nice uh, uh, stroke going. In other words, where you have more backswing and more follow through. That's one of the things you notice about the pros when they break. The follow through, some of their tips go that far. And the amazing thing about it is they, they stay low all the way through. You know, that way the ball doesn't pop in the air. A lot of times people, you know, want to jack up or something like this and the cue ball hop down the table and end up going off the table like that. You want to keep the cue stick fairly level as you accelerate through. So doesn't it pop the ball up too when you're hitting down hard on it? it absolutely. Pop that ball up. Absolutely. Yeah, and that's uh, something you want to avoid at all costs because when you get to the higher levels of pool, when you scratch on the brake or knock the cue ball off the table, you usually lose. I've noticed too. When yeah. People break hard with their sticks up. The ball will reflect off the table. Yes. Yeah. Um, off the ball is because they're sticking stuff too high. Exactly. It's just too much on it's that too cue. Much spin on yeah. It. Yeah, that's important. Because the cue ball leaves the table anyway. Anyway. We, yeah. Yeah. Right. You can put two, sometimes three quarters in front of the ball. Yeah. And it'll go, goes over a bit. Yeah. But it doesn't go stay up very long. It, <clears throat> and here's a good way to practice your break too. He's chalked just like normal. But one thing, you know, in the beginning when you're learning, you want to practice actually breaking without even the cue ball there. And you'll notice my stroke is a little bit longer than it would normally be. And you notice my body kind of follows through like that a little bit. But I'm not popping in the air, I'm staying down. Because I want the cue to stay level and go all the way through like that. That's what creates power. The more that you can get backswing and follow through, you know, without trying to muscle it too much, the more power you're going to get. 
So I'm going to try to hit that 15 as dead solid as I can. And again, I see the, my aim point, I draw the line all the way back. My cue is just relaxed and falls right on the line. I swing down. Warm-up strokes are really key. But I'm hitting it almost dead center, dead center ball, because I don't want it to jump or fly around the center. That's the way I'd like to do it. <laughs> well, they, opened, they opened up pretty good, and uh, this will be a good. Uh, this is really what today's class is all about. I didn't make a ball on the break. I got a pretty good spread, but let's uh, use this as a learning experience and decide. You're the incoming player now. Which would be preferable, stripes or solids? Hit the strikes right now. Okay. Because I don't see a real clear shot from the solids that it's your first shot. The only shot that solids has that's decent would be the six, and that's a lot of green, isn't mm -hmm. it, Jan? Okay. You can work with the strikes. Yeah. And again, once one thing that I would be looking at here is once the eleven's out of the way, then the twelve could go in the pocket. These two are open, 13, yeah. 14, 15. Yeah, there's almost three balls on yeah, the rail for yeah. solids. Right, yeah. and that's Four. that's also a factor too. Yeah. Okay. Because that makes it a little tougher. Yeah. To All right. Now, the one thing I want you to remember about the rules of eight ball is that right now the table's still open, even if I made a ball. So right now I could actually play the seven into the eleven and call stripes. But once you establish your group either stripes or solids, then thereon you must make a legal shot on your, your balls. Now we're going to go ahead and choose stripes because they, they seem to offer the best possible avenue. I've got several choices here. I can make the 14 and then the 15. I think I'll, I'll try to, I'll, I'll just try to follow, you know, kind of a simple pattern. So I'm just going to roll the ball real gently. Again, I don't need to do anything fancy. I just wanted to get a little angle on the 15 ball. Now, when you're playing eight ball, it's always better to have little angles than it is to be straight in, because that way you have more options for position. For position. Exactly. So I've got a nice little angle here. I can play the 15. I'm thinking go one rail, two rail, and I come right out here from the 10 and the 9. Also, the 13 will be open down in the corner. And again, I don't need a lot of speed. Nice, smooth, rolling ball. And that's another thing. Most of your shots are going to be nice, smooth, rolling ball shots. You know, that is the most reliable shot, most consistent. The hardest shot in pool is the draw shot. Second to that is when you have to stun. Okay. So most of your shots are going to be just smooth, easy, rolling balls. Notice how fast this table is. That mm -hmm. nice and soft. Yeah. <laughs> It'd be sitting up against right. the rail if it's yeah. over there. <clears throat> okay, how are we doing here? It, see, I, got, I was going for the 9 or the 10, but if I went too far, I would have had the 13 in the car. Mm -hmm. You try to keep the ball in the middle of your object ball so you have more options. So, what's my next shot here? What do you think? What would, I, what would you choose? Jesse? <laughs> um, I'd probably do the nine. Okay. Because I'll go for that eleven next. All right. You know, uh, uh, that's a really good idea because, like we mentioned earlier, once the eleven is out of there, then that opens up up to twelve. All right. I'll follow Jesse's advice here. And again, I'm going to hit a nice, smooth, rolling ball. Notice I hit that pretty hard. What would you shoot here if you now that you have solids? 
Well, if I was shooting against yeah. Peter, I would do a safety. A safety? Okay. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Mine was right. a three ball. Okay, we'll talk more about that as we go. And Brad's, Brad's uh, you know, on track here because, uh, you know, I don't really have a good shot. The only shot that I can see is the three ball. That's the only one I can see, yeah. too. And a lot of times, whether or not you play safety or not depends on who you're playing. Now, if you're playing a real good player, probably safeties are good because they tend to frustrate people that are better and so forth. Okay. Throw their game off. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> slow them down. Yeah, slow them down. Yeah. Just it's a little. Fun. <laughs> yeah. One one really good safety that I can see is that I could I could uh, well actually you know what. That six Even if I shoot the six, I'm still going to be safe no matter what. So I might as well go ahead and play the six because I think it'll bump into the five and I'll have a nice easy shot on the one. Yeah. So we'll go ahead and call the six here. Oh, it didn't quite hit the five. From my opponent, and I still have no shot, right? So now I can really play a safety. In other words, the one is on the rail here, so I'm going to knock the one a little closer to the pocket and leave the cue ball down here so my opponent doesn't have a shot. I'm hit it nice and easy, just really softly. And you notice I got the one right in front of the pocket, which really helps a lot for my next shot. Now, Pete, explain the yeah. pre requirements of a safety shot. To All right, sure it's legal. on a safety shot, you must con <laughs> after contact, some ball has to hit the rail. Some ball, not some both. ball. It could be the cue ball, an object ball, even the eight ball. Okay. All right, but you must hit your ball first and have contact with with one of those balls to a rail. Any ball. With, with any ball to any it. Ball. Any ball. Basically, it's the, yeah. same, it's the same rule you have when you're shooting. Right. That, it, let's say, Pete goes for the 10 ball and the corner hits it real slow, doesn't make it. If nothing hits a rail, it's still ball in hand. Right. Same as it would be for a safety. Right. Okay. Exactly. The only thing is, if you're playing a safety, you should call the safety. Yeah. Well, if you accidentally put something in. You know, then you could say, well, that wasn't yeah. a safety and continue to shoot. <laughs> right. So. And there's three things that you think about when you play safety. Number one is distance. I accomplished that here, didn't I? Yeah. Number two is hooking the person so they can't hit the ball. But number three is the one that I see ignored in league a lot, and that is improve your position. Improve your position. And I did that here. Okay. Those are the three things that you consider when you play safety. So if you use a safety, yeah. you're done after that shot? Yes. Even if In fact, game. I could have actually pocketed the ball and played safe. That's a legal but you, but you wouldn't have a shot after that? Yeah, it would be a, your opponent. Your okay, as soon as you call safe, it's yeah. the other person's after right. your shot. Right. Gotcha. Yeah, go ahead, Chris. The reason why I, I would do a safe in a game, if you have a wild shot to make it, and you don't know where your cue ball is going to end up because there's balls all over the places and that, it's just more, more. Uh, uh, it's not sloppy. Gotcha. And, and it protects you from protects setting up the next person. Because when they shoot their crappy shot, they're going to set <laughs> you up for the better shot. Yeah. Okay. Yeah, sometimes if the safety is easier than... Yeah, shot. The shot. Exactly. Yeah. If you have Plus, a real difficult safety, it, that safety. can win you a game. Absolutely. Do you need to call safety? Yes. And, you know, unless, the, also, it's a, it's a gentle person's call. For example, uh, you know, if what I'm doing is, is blatantly obvious, like, you know, if I was going to shoot the one here or something, you don't need to call the one, you know. That's called gentle person's call, you know, when it's obvious what you're shooting. But if you're shooting a combination, a bank, or a safety, you do need to call. Yeah. All right, uh, stripes. 
Uh, there's really no downside for shooting the 10 because, uh, you know, actually, if I make it, then I do have something we call sideboards here. If I overcut the 10 and hit the rail here, it's going to go off the 11 in there. So I think I'll try to do that. That way I can get shape on the 11 next. Boy, that's a lot of green. Well, I made it, but I didn't get any shape, did I? No. And I, I blocked that pocket on the 13, so that's no good either. <laughs> this is a good, good practice game. But I could... You could hit the rail first. Yeah, I could go off the rail, absolutely. That is a real, extremely hard shot where I, you know, in a way that's a little bit of a sideboard, but I'd have to hit it awful good, wouldn't I? So what would you recommend here for stripes on their next shot? It's a good chance to think about it. What would stripes do here? Can we get just Okay, uh, I couldn't cut it in here because that's, that's impossible. I, I, but it could cut in that corner wow. pocket. It could cut in that corner pocket. But that that's almost uh, that's a really really thin shot. And also another possibility I could make the twelve. I'd do a safety. Safety two. All right. I'd roll that ball in front of that. All right. Perfect. Remember the three things: hook, distance, and improve your position. I'd roll that. 11 up to the purple ball in the queue where the up towards the 11 ball. Okay. Anybody else have an idea? Brad, what would you do? 13 in the side. You could do that. That's impossible. <laughs> well, the easiest shot is safety. Uh, I got a, I got a good safety. All right, go ahead. Rather go than, ahead. Rather than the 11 ball. Yeah, yeah. Oh, now we're talking. Take mm -hmm. that thing and bring your cue. Right. Yeah, I could do that. Yeah, that's better than leaving the cue yes. ball here because yeah, yeah, for me, here. leave the cue ball here. Yeah, yeah. Second yeah. ball, okay. two ball, three ball, one. It opens up the table for All the right. start or the song. And we got that one ball down there, and he would be uh, probably without a shot. The only other option that I could see is I could roll the the twelve in a better position near the side pocket, and then try to bring the cue ball behind there. That would be yeah. another possibility. Let me just shoot that one because I think uh, I would, if I was if I was shooting this, I'd want to get the 12 in a better place. So I'm going to try to get it somewhere near the pocket here. And you know what? I think I'll call it. I'll go ahead and call it 12 in the side. I didn't quite get that, but I got it hooked. I got yeah, hooked up some balls. There it is. So, sure did. so Solid's in is in trouble again. Now ideally I would have liked to get it underneath, but this is still good because yeah. Solid's basically has no shot at all here except the seven on the side. That's mm -hmm. pretty much it. Alright. And I've got my eleven ball protected. Uh, you know, if I if I was stripes. Well, let's go ahead and just shoot the seven. Oh, nice shot. Nice shot. And hopefully I would have gotten a shot on the one, but I didn't. I'm still in trouble. Solids. Go ahead and bait the two over here. Same. And now I have a couple of options. I could shoot the one and then the five, 
But you know what? The three is never going to be easier, so I want to get rid of the three first. And I'm going to stun it a little bit. Now I'll play the one. And the hard shot's going to be playing the five and trying to get the cue ball right here for the four. And a little angle. Yeah. Now I'm going to do it a little different. I'm going to try to come this way and reverse. Bam! Oh, see, I, need, I needed to get right <laughs> through there. You see how I. Yeah. yeah. Oh, man. So now. No, no option but to play safe here. Right. And again, I'm in a horrible position because I got to use the bridge to shoot over a boss. <laughs> what would, how would you play safe here? Oh boy. And again, I can't hook the person because uh, you know I only have one ball on the table. Forget if you can. If you could get the, the cue ball in here. That's all right. Thank you. That's a possibility. Because I mean, you can, if you get it too far over. Okay, I like that, Brad, but how can I improve my position? How can I improve my position here? Move your two four balls. Well, I'm just throwing this out as food for thought. What if I cut the floor and roll it so it gets in front of the 11? <laughs> sure. You like that? Ch yeah, Jan like likes that. that. <laughs> okay. All right. We'll, we'll try that. And again, this is a touchy shot because I've got to have really good speed. But the reward is great because it blocks him from making his 11. Actually, that's a Makeable? Yeah, you go off the 11. You go off the rail, off the oh, 11 man. in the pocket. I'm not that good, Jesse. Yeah, you are. Do <laughs> 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 you like that, Jan? I love that. All right. <laughs> All right. Now, what does Stripes do? Oh, well, you, got, you got the 12. OK, I've got the 12. And you know what I'm seeing here? If I make the 13, yeah. I can go off the floor and open up the pocket. So let's let's try that. Hey, didn't I just see you? <laughs> what did you say? Let's go drink your hand, but I don't All right. Uh, if I make the 13 off the four, I should have a shot on the 11. Let's go so. So I've got to overcut this just a little bit. Yeah, a bit dead. I just have it. Bam. Nice. Oh, really? Now I've got shape on the 11. And all I have to do is draw it a little bit up here so I can play the 8 inside. So that is going to go for you to hit that. Yeah. And that's important, Kathy, because all you have to do is call the ball in the pocket. You don't have to call kisses or things. Again, always call the eight ball. Call the eight ball. Eight inside. Nice. Okay, questions? Looks like working your way through a, a heavy uh, interstate. It's very yeah. trafficked, and well, you're trying to like pick out the best way to maneuver. Every yeah. shot is a move. Right. It's a move to improve your position, no. play safe, or be offensive, and you know, make the ball and go. And that one inch shot you made at the uh, pocket was really an offensive safe, if you will, because there was no way that your opponent could yeah. play their ball. Now, Jesse advised me to try that shot. You know, if I would, I, I think I would make that like one out of ten. Because no, all you're doing is reflecting off the ball, and it's going to automatically. No, go that off. had to hit the rail than yeah. off the ball. 
Yeah. You go straight off the rail, but if you're going that way, the friction's automatically going to go that way. Well, for me, that's, that wouldn't have been high percentage. And again, that's what you try to think about when you're playing eight ball. You want to play a percentage shot that's more successful. Like, a lot of times when you're choosing between a safety and a shot. It's like a carry-off shot. Yeah. Like yeah. Big carry-off yeah. shot. <laughs> yeah, and I noticed at the beginning, Jan had mentioned, yeah. well, there isn't a straight-in shot on yeah. a particular ball. After the break, don't necessarily look for the easiest shot. If you go for the easiest yeah. shot and you bury yourself behind your opponent's ball, now, you don't have another shot, and if you're buried in their balls, they might be able to, to get all of their balls. So look for something where your cue ball, you can get your cue ball to roll so that you have a shot on the next ball. And straight in shots are the hardest to get positioned. So take something that has a little bit of an angle so you can move that cue ball around. Yeah. Very good advice, absolutely. All right, the rest of the time, I just want to take questions about anything. Anything you want to know. Everything you always want to know about pool, but we're afraid to ask. We're not talking about sex, we're talking about pool. <laughs> Anything. I do have something on here called the ball in hand to run out using two, three, and four balls. All right. I, I, I'd, I'd like to see I spent so much time on this other stuff, I didn't get to that. But this is a good drill. In fact, you can do this today. Since you're going to be playing eight ball, this is fun to do. You just take up one, either a stripe or a solid, and an eight ball, and you throw both of them on the table, anywhere on the table. And then you take ball in hand. Got it. And you run the two balls. And the key here is you're learning how to play position. Okay. Now you notice the four is here in the eight in the corner. How do I get position on the table? I would say a rolling ball. Okay. Would I put the cue ball, where do you think? I would come in from this angle. So in this angle or this angle? Uh, boy, that's a good question. Actually, both work. Okay. Yeah. I, I, I guess I would be more comfortable coming from this angle. I don't know. All right. All right. And again, if I put it at this angle, yeah. if I want to get good position on the eight, all I need is a simple rolling ball. In other words, I'm going to hit it above center. I didn't need to use English of any kind, and I have a nice easy shot on the eight. Now, I could have used a little left English, and it would have changed the shot so I came out right here. Got it. And that's, you know, that might be an instance where, where I would just use a half tip of left English just to move it over there. Then you get, uh, once, you, once you have fun doing that, then you get two either stripes or solids, throw them on the table anywhere, and practice ball in hand. In other words, but one of the things you do when you get more than one object ball is you determine which is your key ball. In other words, the ball before the eight. And it's not always the closest ball, surprisingly enough. It's where the other ball makes it, the last ball makes it simple to make the eight. Now, a lot of times our first impression here might be to shoot the 13 and then the 10. But the 10 to the 8 is a little bit uh, difficult. Mm -hmm. So what I, I would actually do on this shot, if I was getting ball in hand, is I'd put the cue ball right here next to the 10, and I'd hit a nice, easy rolling ball to bring the cue ball right to here. Once I make the 13, I have a simple shot on, on, on the 8. And again, you notice how close I put it, and I didn't put it straight in. You know, that's the thing about ball in hand. You put it at angles so you're, but you can get position easier. So all I'm going to do is hit above center rolling ball, bring it right to the rail like this. Really nice. Oh, the table. <laughs> you see the table. And again, this got weird. I'm going to have to use a bridge here. And 
know, all I have to do, again, I don't need to do anything special, center ball, roll the ball, like that. And then I have a straight in shot. All right, you want to do one more? One more? I'll let you, you all solve this one, okay? Get to solve this. Yeah, go ahead. Uh, yeah, go ahead. Anywhere. The only place you can be is this. Anywhere on the plane surface. That's the old rules. That they no longer apply. Oh. Yeah. Although APA, after the break of the scratch, is now on the kitchen. That's the only difference I can think of. But in BCA, our rules here, in all the tournaments, any foul, any scratch, is ball in hand anywhere on the table. All right, you all ready to solve one? All right, we got three balls. That's me. <laughs> all right, which one do I shoot first, and which one's my key ball? One to one and the three. Just Jan, you said the one first, then the three. Jan sets herself up. Yeah. And again, the key, I think Jan's absolutely right on this. The only thing that I would make sure, I wouldn't set it straight in. I would give it an angle. Why do I put it in an angle? That way it's easier to get on that side of the three. If I put it straight in, it's going to be hard to get the key ball over here. And I need a little bit of angle so I can make the three on the side, which is my key ball. My key ball rolls to the rail into the line of the eight. So I'm going to set it just a little bit to the left of the one. Ball in hand. Just roll it forward. <laughs> Now I have just a tiny bit of angle on the three, and literally again, rolling ball, right? Nice smooth rolling ball above center. Hit the rail and bounce towards the end. And again, that's one of the things about eight ball you need to learn. You always go into the line on your next ball. You don't cross it. Into the line. And that'll depend. When you go in for position, you know, you might get position on the three, but are you on the correct side yeah. of the of the ball? If you would have been on the right side, then it would have had to bring the cue ball yeah, either off the rail or all the way down and back. So you get on on the other side of the ball so your angle is towards right. your next ball. God, the biggest mistake I see in league that people make when they get ball in hand, they set the shots up too straight in. They're afraid, you know, they're going to miss it. Like, for example, here's a good example of what I see a lot of times. They'll be like this. You know, they have two balls left, and they might do something like this. They'll set it right there and just roll the ball like that. Yeah. They hope they can make why, would shot you wanna, right? why would you want to shoot a shot like that? A long shot. Yeah, when, when it's so simple to give it an angle like that, and turn the shot into a hanger, you know, just uh, like that. You know, that's ten times easier shot mm -hmm. than the other way. Any other questions? Anything? You want to play around with all that? Yeah. And again, if you if you want to play eight ball today, let's get used to using nine balls for next week. All right. And again, it's, it, it's actually more fun, I think, because it, it clears a lot of space and you actually get more offensive, you know, practicing shooting shots. You remember, right? <laughs> you, did, you did real well in, in the nine ball. She sure did. Yeah. In the beginner class. Oh, well. Oh, you're doing good. All right, have at it. It's it's no more <laughs> Thank you.
I'm just going to shut the camera off. I don't want to. Yes, please. <laughs> you know what?